Welcome to ECE 341 Random Processes Lecture Number 6 for Bernoulli Trials and Binomial Distributions. Now, a Bernoulli trial is a random event whose outcome is either true or false. For example, I have a coin toss. If I win when I get a heads, I got a 50 50 shot. It either is a heads or it isn't. It doesn't have to be 50 50. I could take it a, a die. If I roll a 1, I win. Anything else they lose. So here I've got a 1 in 6 chance of winning. A binomial distribution is n Bernoulli trials. If I take three coins and flip them, here I've got three successes, three heads. Or if I take six dice, roll them, and then six success anytime I roll a 1, I've got one success, five failures. That's the binomial distribution. A couple definitions. P is the probability that you, of a uh, success. A coin would be 50-50, rolling a 1 would be 1 in 6. Q is 1 minus P. All probabilities have to add to 1, so that's why Q has to be 1 minus P. N is the number of trials, and F of X is the probability density function. It's a way to describe a random event. This table we'll talk about a little bit later. A Bernoulli trial only has two possible outcomes. It's true or false. So if I have this be the number of successes, here's the probability. If I have a probability of P of a success, then a failure has to be 1 minus P, or Q. There's only two possible events in a Bernoulli trial, true or false. This axis over here is the number of successes. Note that when you take the Z transform, this represents time. I've got something at time equals 0, time equals 1, time equals 2. In probability, I have 0 outcomes, 1 outcome, 2 outcomes. The math doesn't care what M represents. It could be time, it could be successes. Likewise, the Z transform that applies to time, discrete time systems also applies to discrete probabilities. Z transform is extremely useful. That's why we'll be using it in this class as well. With only two possible outcomes to represent the probability density function mathematically, I would say x of m is q times delta. This is true only when m equals 0. Delta of m minus 1 is true only when delta is when m equals 1. So it gives you p at m equals 1, q at m equals 0. That is this function. Now, the z transform is extremely useful. If I want to apply that to this probability density function, I'll get a thing called the moment generating function, or the z-transform of the PDF. Uh, recalling, z means the next value. z times m, or z times x, is the next value of x. If z means the next value, then z inverse is the anti-next value, or previous value. So the z-transform of the Bernoulli trial is q at time 0, plus p delayed by 1, z inverse times p. I can rewrite it as this. This is the Z transform of the Bernoulli trial. We'll be using that quite a bit later. The mean. The mean is the average. You can think of that as your expected winnings. If I win a dollar every time I flip a coin, on average I'll get 50 cents. If I get a dollar every time I roll a one, every time I roll the die, I'm expecting to gain one sixth of a dollar. The mean of a Bernoulli trial is the sum of k times the probability of k. So when k equals 0, the probability of 0 is q. Probability of 1 is p. Add them all up, I get p. The average of a Bernoulli trial is p. The variance is a measure of the spread. Normally, we use standard deviation. Mathematically, the variance actually works out nicer. The variance, or the square of the standard deviation, is linear. When I add two distributions together, the variance adds. The variance is defined as the probability of k times the distance k is from the mean squared. Plugging that in, 0 is p away from the mean squared times q. 1 is 1 minus p away from the mean times p. Gives you p times 1 minus p, or pq. So that's the variance of a Bernoulli trial, p times q. And MATLAB, I can do Bernoulli trials as well. MATLAB has a function called RAND. Every time I type in RAND, 
I get a random number between 0 and 1. MATLAB is a matrix language. If I do RAND of 10, 1, I get 10 random numbers. There's also RANDN. That's random with the normal distribution. That's going to come up later. That's the normal or Gaussian distribution we'll be covering in a couple days. For a Bernoulli trial, we use the RAND function. That just gives you a number between 0 and 1. For example, if I do RAND of 5, 1, I get 5 random numbers between 0 and 1. Every time you type that, you're going to get five different, a different answer. To convert that to binary, suppose I want to flip a coin with the probability of success being 0.7. I can do rand of 5, 1 less than 0.7 times 1. That's going to give me true or 1. Anytime this is less than 0.7, 70% of the time, and 0 otherwise. So here I flipped 5 coins, probability of the heads is 0.7, and I got 3 heads and 2 tails. If I flip a coin 100 times, I can find the mean and standard deviation. For example, let's take 100 coins. Each has a 70% chance of getting a heads. The mean will just be the mean of that. It's supposed to be 0.7. Um, I only got 0 .5, 0 0.59. The standard deviation is supposed to be 0.4528. That's p times q my, or p times q, square root. Got 4943. That's only for 100 coins. If you only have a limited number of coins, I don't expect my Monte Carlo simulation, my MATLAB simulation to come up exactly the same. If I repeat 1 million times, however, after a million coin tosses, the average is very close to the average. After a million coin tosses, the variance or standard deviation is very close. That's essentially the definition for probability. As the number of coin flips goes to infinity, the number of successes approaches the mean. The variance approaches the calculated variance as well. Um, as a sidelight, this is kind of an interesting question. When I ask, what's the probability the Vikings will win the next game? That's not really a probability question. Probability is only defined if I repeat an event an infinite number of times, the number of successes will converge to the mean. The home opener is not repeatable. So I can't really talk about the probability of uh, the Vikings winning their home opener. What you're really talking about is what's the betting line on the Vikings winning the home opener. The Vegas odds, they try to place the odds in such a way that the winners and losers balance out. That way the house wins on ties, the losers pay the winners, and the house always wins. So really for betting lines, it's not, it's not really a probability, it's just equilibrium. The Money on the losers equals the money for the winners. Uh, but that's kind of a sidelight. So again, a Bernoulli trial is a single event, true or false. A binomial distribution is a sum of n Bernoulli trials. For example, it's the probability of getting m heads when I toss n coins. The distribution for that would be n choose m, p to the m, q to the n minus m. That's supposed to be p raised to the power m. The kind of way to do that if I want to get two heads out of three tosses, that's going to be, I've got three coins, choose two. Then I've got the probability of a heads squared, probability of a tails to the one power. That's the uh, probability of getting m heads with the, and n tosses. A couple of ways to prove that. I can use the enumeration. For example, if I want to say they're I'm going to toss two coins. There's four ways I can toss two coins. I can get heads, 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 tails, tails, heads, tails, tails. The probability of each is the probability of each event, p times p, p times q, q times p, q times q. Multiplication is commutative, so the probability of getting two heads is p squared. One heads is two times q times p. Zero heads is q squared. If I want to flip three coins, there are eight permutations. One of them has three heads, three different ways of getting two heads, three different ways of getting one heads, one way to get three tails. If I want to do more, uh, then it gets kind of com complicated. One way to see that is convolution. The probability density function for Bernoulli trial is just q times delta of m plus p times delta n minus 1. Another way to write that is the sum of k, x of k, this guy right here, 
uh, times delta of n minus k. Uh, this works because this is zero anywhere except when this quantity is zero. It's going to pull off when k equals zero, or when m equals zero. k has to be zero, so we get x of zero. x of zero is x of zero. When m equals one, this is only true when k equals one, so pull off x, x of one. x of one is x of one, and so on. So it seems kind of like a silly way of writing x of m. The point behind that, though, is if I change that delta function to something else, I can now say, what's the probability of getting n heads when I take a Bernoulli trial times Bernoulli trial? This is convolution. This is written as star star. X convolved with itself gives the probability of rolling two, uh, flipping two coins. Graphically, what you're doing is I'm taking x of k times x of m minus k. When m equals 0, I'm right here. The minus k means you flip it. The p goes over here on the left, and I start at 0. Multiply the two together, and I get q squared. So probably getting a 0 is going to be q times q, q squared, just like we calculated. Probably to getting 1 head. Shift this to the right by 1. Now I'll multiply and add. I get p times q plus q times p gives you 2 pq. That's probability of 1 head. Probability of 2 heads is a shift right again is p squared. 3 heads, shift right again. I'm going to get 0 because nothing lines up anymore. So when I convolve the two together, I get q squared at 0, 2pq at 1, p squared at 2. That's convolution. MATLAB has its own convolution function. It's called CONV. For example, if I have a 70% chance of getting a heads, when I convolve x with x, I'm going to get q squared, 2q times p, and p squared. So there's a 49% chance I'll have two heads, 42% chance I'll have one heads, 9% chance I'll have zero heads. That's convolution. The Z transform. is well, one property of the Z transform is it turns convolution in the time domain into multiplication in the Z domain. Or for this class, it turns convolution and probability domain into multiplication in the Z domain. That's essentially because multiplying convolutions or multiplying yeah, multiplying polynomials is convolution. For example, suppose I want to multiply two polynomials together. What I do is take this first polynomial and flip it. I'm going to have the zeroth power first. So it's going to be 8 plus 7x plus 6x squared plus 5x cubed. Take the second polynomial, flip it. That's part of convolution is you flip it. it. Gives you 4, 3x, 2x squared. Now start shifting. At k equals 0, I have 8 times 4 is 32. So the zeroth term is 32. That's going to be your 8 times 4. Now shift the bottom term to, term to the right by 1. Now multiply. 8 times 3 plus 7 times 4 is 52. This multiplied out gives you 52x. Now shift right again. The 2, 3, 4 get shifted right. Now multiply and add, I get 61. that will give you 61x squared. Shift right again, I get 52x cubed, and so on. Or in MATLAB, Input A, input B, convolve the two. Here's the answer. This is going to be 32x, plus, or 32 plus 52x, plus 61x squared, plus 52x cubed, and so on. Convolution and multiplication polynomials are one and the same. The Z transform of two Bernoulli trials is Q plus 1 over ZP. When I convolve these together, I multiply the polynomials. That's why the Z transform multiplying Z transforms is actually the convolution of the PDFs. With that, I can use MATLAB to say what's the probability of rolling a single die, two dice, three dice, four dice, five dice, six dice, or six coins. And I can get the PDF for any number of tosses that you want. Uh, second way of doing it is using the definition of the probability of the polynomials. For example, if I want to get four heads and six tosses, that's six choose four, six coins, four of them will be heads. 
probability of the heads is 0.7. I've got four of them. Probability of the tails is 0.3. I've got two of them. Gives me a 32% chance of getting four heads out of six. Going back to the previous chart, one, two, three, zero, one, two, three, four. 32% chance of getting four heads that matches up. Either way works. Kind of an interesting sidelight. There's the thing, thing called Pascal's triangle. If I take the number one and I split it up, one plus zero is one, one plus one is two, one plus zero is one. Take the next row, one plus zero is one, one plus two is three, two plus one is three, one plus zero is one. Keep on going. These are the coefficients of n choose m. Another interesting sidelight, if I do even odd, odd is dark, even is light, this is what um, Pascal's triangle looks like for even odd. Again, kind of interesting. I'm not sure how useful it is, but it is interesting. Central limit theorem. This is something we'll be talking about later. Central limit theorem is probably one of the most important concepts in probability. If I take 100 coins and flip them, it's going to be rather large. What I get is this distribution. This is a standard bell-shaped curve. That's called a normal distribution. The central limit theorem states that all distributions converge to a normal distribution. That's probably one of the most important distributions in statistics, and we'll be covering that later. In addition, all probabilities have to add to 1. If I take that PDF and add them all up, I've got to get to 1. If I flip 100 coins, something happens. The mean will be... the average of the data times m. The variance is the distance of the average from the mean times probability. And if you have multiple outcomes, such as the probability of getting at least, or two people playing games of tennis, player A wins 60% of the time, best of seven series, what's the probability that A wins? If I play seven games, A could win four, five, six, or seven. Any of those result in A winning. It's just the probability of rolling a four, of four heads, plus probability of five heads, plus six heads, plus seven heads, add them all up. A's got a 71% chance of winning the match. Uh, second problem is two people are playing tennis, but instead of winning four games, they have to win by four games. That's a totally different problem. If A wins, then B wins. I'm back where I started. In theory, that could be an infinite series. That's a Markov chain. Uh, that's not a Bernoulli trial. That's going to come up later. Last thing to talk about is a hypergeometric distribution. If I have a box containing A white balls and B black balls, in each trial I take one ball out of the bin and put it back in, the probability of drawing N white balls is actually a binomial distribution. The probabilities don't change as I draw a ball because they put them back, so it's just binomial. If, on the other hand, you do not replace the balls, that becomes a hypergeometric distribution. So with replacement and without replacement, totally change the distribution function. That's just kind of a subtlety. So with that, we have Bernoulli trials and their corresponding binomial distribution.